anybody have a job? Does anyone work? I was like, no, like, I finna be in the pit. I got a DUI when I was 18. Pit kinda goes dummy though, I'm not gonna lie. Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kyla, and today we're gonna be discussing an influencer that I have seen all over TikTok for multiple different reasons on multiple different occurrences. So if you clicked on this video, you probably already know who it is, but it's an influencer called Tara's World. She does TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and she also has an OnlyFans, which according to her is where like most of her money comes from. So we're gonna talk about her today. In my opinion, she is most known for the controversial videos that she has made, which that's kind of what this video is focusing on. Now, honestly, the most recent couple of times that Tara has been called out and her videos have gone viral in a negative way. They're really only a drop in the bucket compared to what she's been called out for in the past, such as DUIs, excusing blackface, and basically diddling her pet bird, which yeah, we're gonna cover all of that now. So let's get into it. The first video that was kind of the most recent that I've seen scandal, although who knows by the time I upload this, there could be something else. It was basically where she went to a bunch of Harry Styles concerts. He did a residency in LA, which means he was living there, staying there and doing like a ton of shows. I think he did like something like 15 or 20 shows in LA specifically. She went to majority of those shows. Like I think she went to like 13 or 10 or I don't know. She went to a bunch of them basically, not just one or two, but like double digits. So keep that in mind when she's freaking out about maybe not getting tickets to this one show that caused her to spend $10,000 on Harry Styles tickets. The most insane thing happened to me last night at the Harry Styles concert. Basically, I ended up spending $10,000 at this Harry Styles concert. Let me explain. I'm pissed. I'm beyond livid. So I'm going to Harryween yesterday. I have, to, mind you, with an entire group of people. I never go to concerts with like a group of people. I'm so excited. We all have picked. The day before, I had bought me and my friend Max, who was already at the venue, like waiting to go in. I bought me and him our pit seats. They were like $890. Also, I usually use SeatGeek when I'm buying tickets. I always use SeatGeek. But for this like specific concert on StubHub, it was much cheaper. So we decided to buy them on StubHub and it was like $1,700 for two seats. So we're walking out the door, me and my friends. And Max is waiting for us at the venue. And I'm like, these tickets never made it to my email. I'm like looking, it says the, the tickets were confirmed, but like the tickets aren't there. So I call StubHub and they're just like, yeah, like, first of all, this lady on the phone sounded like she was at a bar and she would like hardly speak to me. Like she wasn't even talking. Like she didn't give a fuck, but like at, by the, she was basically just like, yeah, like we can't give you your pit seats. Like I was like, I paid almost $2,000 for these pit seats. I need these pit seats. She was like, yeah, we can replace them with like balcony tickets. I was like, no, like I finna be in the pit. Like I, I bought these pit tickets. I need these pit tickets. She's like, well, we can't give them to you. Like the seller, we can't get in touch with him, blah, blah, blah. I am like out the door. I am like, fr oh, I can't even explain to you the stress that I was feeling in this very moment. I was just like, what are you talking about? So I go on the internet, I go on SeatGeek and I go on Vivid Seats because I'm like, what do I do? And I also have Max waiting for me at the venue like, hey, where's my ticket? Like, I'm not going to be like, oh yeah, by the way, we have balcony now. Like what? And I'm going with like a whole group of people. I go on Vivid Seats and SeatGeek and there's one ticket left on each site after taxes, $4,200 each. I buy them because what other fucking choice do I have? And thank God those works, but I spent $10,000 on all these tickets. And like nothing like this has ever happened to me in my life. And I am just going to sit here until my, I take my last breath and tell everybody don't use StubHub unless they make this up to me somehow. Cause I'm pissed. Like I literally, I used StubHub from the time I was like first going to concerts when I was like 10 until like six months ago. Then I started using SeatGeek, but I use StubHub for that long and nothing like this ever happened. This was insane. And I'm just like, what the fuck? So yeah, that's one of the most tone deaf videos ever, but I wanna talk a little bit about why specifically I find it so tone deaf. First of all, she says she's pissed, which I mean, I get it. I get being upset that you paid for something and it's not there, but I also wanna know why did she only check if she got her tickets when she was leaving her door to go to the concert? Like that, I don't know how far in advance if she bought them the day before or something, but either way, like, when I make a purchase, especially something like concert tickets that like I need those on a specific day, I'm checking my email right away to make sure I got it. Why would you not think to make sure you have your ticket, which you need to show to get into a venue until you're leaving your front door? Like that makes no sense to me. You're literally on the way and you didn't think to check it. And what she's so mad about is her own mistake in a way. Like, yes, the person should have sent her the tickets, obviously. But had she checked beforehand, there might have been more they could do. But if she's calling in, like, I don't know what time the concert was at, but let's say it's at 6 and she's leaving at 4 or something. How is someone who's an employee of StubHub supposed to be able to do anything about that at that time? Like, honestly, it's way too late. You waited way too long. She also 
I find it was pretty rude about the Subhub employees saying she sounded like she was in a bar. She sounded like she didn't care. Like I'm sure she wasn't working in a bar. She was probably in a call center with other people around her. So it sounded busy. And then for her to say she sounds like she doesn't care. I'm sorry, but if someone called me saying, no, like I finna be in the pit. I also probably wouldn't sound like I care that much because you're being bratty and spoiled and you need to understand that if there's no tickets available, I don't care how much I like you or want to help you, there's nothing I can do, right? Like that's just how customer service works. I don't know how she doesn't understand that if there's no tickets available, the lady cannot do anything for her. Like what can she do? Genuine question. In my opinion, the person offered the best solution that they could, which was the balcony tickets to which Tara was appalled at because oh my God, balcony tickets would be so lame. I told my friend we had pit tickets. I can't have balcony tickets. And then the infamous line. I was like, no, like, I finna be in the pit. Like, I was like, no, like, I finna be in the pit. I finna be in the pit. I'm finna be in the pit. That is what everyone was roasting her for on TikTok. Like, I mean, so many people. I saw, like, all the comments, first of all, on that TikTok were just about how she's finna be in the pit. Everyone's making fun of her. Anytime that I see anyone comment about Tara now, they use finna somehow. Obviously not the nicest, but I found it hilarious personally. That's what kind of, like, sent me down the rabbit hole about this. And if you're wondering what she's finna do in the pit, this is a little example for you. So yeah, I'm sorry if I wasn't able to play that with sound. Um, obviously it's a Harry Styles song, so it would get copyrighted. She also bought a tent to camp out before she finna be in the pit. So here she is reading in her tent. Anyways, that was the first video of a few where people have been calling Tara extremely tone deaf for complaining about spending 10K on Harry Styles tickets. She did make a video responding to that. She actually made two separate videos responding to that. This is the first one, which I would assume didn't go over as well as she thought it would, given the fact she had to make a secondary addressing it. I don't want to call it an apology because she definitely doesn't apologize. Everyone's always like, be transparent in your videos, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm transparent and everyone's like, this is the most unrelatable thing I've ever seen, go die. I want to get one thing very, very, very clear with you guys. If I only had 10 grand in my bank account, I would spend it on Harry. I'm not saying that that's a flex of any sort. I'm just being real. But I was also wondering if you guys know what accent she has because she sounds very LA. But she also has like, I don't know, when she says like very, it's like very Harry. So I don't really get like, I'm just curious. Anyways, it doesn't matter, but I'm just wondering. Again, like kind of a stupid video to post doesn't really fix anything. It, to me, it just seemed pointless because I wouldn't say she has to apologize for spending her own money on the Harry Styles tickets, but obviously people did think it was tone deaf and stupid and they may have thought it was stupid that she said finna because it's cringe, not gonna lie. In response to this, I would say like, I get that everyone's priorities are different and it's her own money. She can spend it however she wants. That does not bother me at all, honestly. I don't even care that she spent $10,000 on Harry Styles tickets. For me, the issue was the complaining and the finna. That's really the two issues. And even the finna is just stupid and funny. I think my issue with it especially is the fact that and most people, this is where they're at with it, is the fact that she saw no issue going on to TikTok and complaining about her own mistake because she didn't check if she had the tickets, especially in a reasonable time frame for StubHub to be able to do anything. And the choice that she made was to buy new tickets for like $8,000, bringing her total for this concert up to $10,000. And even here, she's saying, if I only had 10,000, I'd spend it on Harry. So it's like, why are you complaining then? Why were you complaining in the first video that you spent that when you're saying no matter what, whether you could afford to or not, that's what you would have wanted to do. And honestly, I think it's weird that she expected sympathy from people who she's complaining to when she has to realize like her situation is not reflective of the general audience that she has. Obviously she can afford $10,000 in Harry Styles tickets, that's fine. For her to complain when a lot of people are like working long hours, working nine to five jobs just to like pay their bills, feed themselves, feed their families, I don't get what she was expecting or what kind of sympathy she thought that those people would have because she spent $10,000 on Harry Styles tickets to go see like her 15th concert or something. Again, she's rich, she can afford it, but that doesn't mean that people have to give a shit about her rich people problems because they don't. Like that's just matter of fact, they just don't have to care. Also, I feel like it was funny that she brought up that people say to be transparent. She was kind of trying to flip this narrative onto her audience and say, well, you guys always want me to be transparent and then I am and you hate me for it. But when people say be transparent, they don't mean whine about spending $10,000 on 
tickets to see a concert. They mean be transparent about things like your mental health, the less glamorous sides about your life. Then she made a secondary video. Again, not gonna call it an apology because it's definitely not an apology, but we will watch that here now. It's again, not an apology, but just kind of her like addressing how she feels about this situation and the Finna thing. Okay, let's bang this all out in one video, all right? First off, let's get one thing clear. I'm not gonna be sitting here crying and talking about how sorry I am over the stupidest shit I've ever seen in my life. I'm not gonna pretend like I'm crying over this shit just so I can get mean people to like me again. I'm not gonna do that. I'm never gonna change my personality or my sarcastic humor to make people like me. First, let's address the bird, because oh my God, <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe I'm saying this. Okay, I'll make this short and sweet for you. So when I first got Marty, my bird, I didn't do any research at all, which is the worst idea. Don't ever do that. Make sure to do a lot of research before you get a pet, because I didn't know anything. So when I first got him, I would make TikToks with him and like, I'd be like petting his back or whatever. Cause like, where, where am I gonna pet the thing, you know? And I started to get like a few comments here and there being like, don't touch him there. Like that can like turn them on. And I thought this was the funniest thing in the world. And so I eventually looked it up and it's true. Like if you touch a bird on their back or under their wings, I guess that can like sexually arouse them. So I made this like dumb video. Cause like me and my mother thought that that was the funniest. It's not funny, but we, we thought it was crazy. Um, that that's a thing. So we'd make jokes about it all the time. And then I made that dumb video like, oh, I still do it sometimes. I was joking, okay? But I get it. Some things are better left in the family group chat. That was a fucking joke. So I will never be defending myself again on why I am the best owner for that bird. I love that bird more than fucking anything. I would do anything for that bird. So shut the fuck up. Second thing, the f the finna shit. First of all, I don't, I don't even know why that came out of my mouth. I never even say that. It just sort of came out because I was flustered. But that's also the dumbest thing I've ever heard. My I've been asking people in my life about this whole situation. I'm like, what do you think? And they're like, that's fucking stupid. If you guys are that mad about something like that, you are not going to make it through this life. I'm just going to tell you that right now. This generation is so great in certain ways, don't get me wrong, but so fucked up in other ways like that. Like, shut the fuck up. That shit blew my mind. I was like, you guys just find anything. I think it's just, you know, people just love, people love to sit online and pick shit apart and then make up these crazy scenarios, these crazy fucking narratives about how I'm, I'm racist. No. Anyways, um, there was one more thing. Oh, I spent $10,000 on those tickets because I had no other choice because that's what I wanted to do with my money. I wasn't so much, compl I was definitely complaining. I was frustrated, okay? But like, it was my decision to do that with my money. I was just telling a story because I, you know, I've never spent that much on concert tickets in my life. But, and of course I'm very grateful and blessed that I'm able to do that. But yeah, everything's relative, just keep that in mind. And you know, I'm so grateful to be able to buy tickets like that. That's why I've done, that's why I've given away 10 tickets to these shows because I want to sort of give back as well. But yeah, if you are a mean person or a pussy, I recommend just block me. Don't watch my videos, okay? Because I'm never going to be like changing my personality because I'm scared of what people are going to say. Couldn't be me. Love you. Yeah. So that was arguably almost worse than the first video just because her attitude in it was really... I don't know, wasn't doing it for me. Her apologies have a tendency of making things way worse. Again, not really an apology. She didn't say sorry, I don't think. She almost dug herself a worse hole because a lot of people like myself hadn't heard of the bird situation until this. I was watching this to see what she would say about Finna and then I found out like a whole other rabbit hole of information that I didn't even know about. So she definitely kind of shot herself in the foot a bit with that one. She says how she wasn't complaining, but she was. It was just something that happened to her and how how she spent the 10,000 on Harry Styles tickets because she wanted to, but she also had no choice when like the other choice is just not to go to that one concert out of like the 10 plus that she saw. There definitely was other choices. So it's kind of funny to hear her say that. Again, tone deaf because most people's only choice is not to go to Harry Styles because they can't even afford a regular price ticket. And then she says, if you guys are mad about the finish shit, you're not going to make it through this life. Like, <laughs> that just seems, again, so dramatic. I don't think anyone was really mad. In fact, in this video, she seemed more mad than any of the videos that I watched making fun of her for saying Finna because no one else seemed like bitter or angry about it. No one else had the same attitude. And then she said that people are calling her racist and that this generation's too sensitive. The reason why some people were calling that out is because what that language is, is A-A-V-E. And of course, when all this came up and people were saying that she was racist, 
a lot of people rediscovered old tweets and things of hers. And of course, in this video where she's addressing everything, she didn't address that because she can't really flip that to suit her narrative. Like it would just not work. So I think that she conveniently left out certain things that people were also calling her out for and then just basically passed it off as you guys are too sensitive, this generation's too sensitive and you're not gonna make it through this life, which is just ridiculous. And it's also just kind of funny to me because when she says like, you're not gonna make it through this life if you're upset about this. Coming from Mrs. DUI, that doesn't really mean a lot to me. I don't know if I'm supposed to feel like threatened or upset that she thinks that I'm not gonna make it through this life, but I really don't feel anything towards that. Um, she's not exactly who I look at as like a role model for what I wanna do with my life. So coming from her, that really means nothing to me. But yeah, moving on because this is definitely not the first time that Tara was called out on TikTok. So this next incident happened actually a bit further back, like a month or two before the Finn to be in the pit, 10,000 on Harry Styles tickets situation happened. And Again, this video is, I think, even more tone deaf, maybe. I don't know, it's it's a tough contender. They're pretty much tied, so let me know which one you think wins for most tone deaf after we watch this. But this video was posted back in September, actually, because I've been playing this video for a while. Just a video of her basically complaining about Be Real and how when she checks Be Real, her friends are just like in bed and how no one wants to work and blah, blah, blah. And it's funny because I don't really know if Tara's ever worked a real job, so that's interesting coming from her. We'll play that video here now. Does anybody have a job? Does anyone work? I swear to God, this be real shit. Like I, I like get shit on myself all the time, even though I'm the most productive person ever. Like I'm always doing something. I'm never in bed in the middle of the day. And then I got be real. And this be real could go off at 11 a.m., 1 p.m., 3, it doesn't matter. Everyone's in bed. There's an alarming amount of people every time that be real goes off that are just in bed with the, with the shades drawn. And it makes me feel so good about myself. I'm like, why are you in bed? Seems like nobody wants to work these days. Get your fucking ass up and work. <laughs> no, like for real though, like this shit's crazy. Like get out of bed. Okay, so that's the video. Again, yeah, pretty tone deaf. Obviously she starts off by saying, does anyone have a job? Which like, yeah, most people do. Most people are not sitting around making TikToks all day. And that's not me saying it's not a job because I mean, I do YouTube as part of my job, which is pretty much the same thing, but it's obviously a lot easier and you have a lot more freedom and flexibility with something like that than someone who has to go into an office for a nine to five or a nurse who has to work a 12 to 15 hour shift at a hospital, right? So yeah, Tara's wondering if anyone works because I guess she hasn't put it together that when she goes out to do her errands, which is shopping, the people ringing through her stuff are actually working a job at that moment. And she thinks that she's the most productive person that she knows of, which, Again, I kind of find that hard to believe. I feel like productivity is a lot easier when you get paid a lot of money to do things like go out and get a tan or make a TikTok video rather than having to actually work a full-time job or take care of kids when you get home, etc. And how she's never in bed in the middle of the day, which this hustle culture that some people subscribe to is such a problem just because you're really shaming people for taking breaks, which there's no benefit to that at all. And like everyone's level of productivity is different. And I mean, I'm sure most of her friends on Be Real are probably influencers who could be like burnt out because it is a lot of work sometimes. Or, you know, maybe their schedule is different. Maybe they do their work at night. So yeah, 11 a.m. or 3 p.m. Maybe they are just in bed, who cares? But for her to think that she's so much better than everyone and no one works is just so cringe. I found it kind of ironic because literally like right after this, she posted a video of her running her errands. And we're gonna watch that here so you can see what the errands are because I was like, wow, I'd be productive too if those were my tasks for the day. So I have a few sick, nasty, insane, cool errands to run. Sorry, that sounded weird. I like to film my errands sometimes so that it keeps me on track. So we have errands to do and we're gonna go do them together. Look at my little pimple patches. I love these. I don't love that I have two fat zonkers on my face, but. These are quite possibly my favorite drink to ever exist. They're matcha lemonades from Swoon and Chamberlain Coffee. Delectable. Okay, um, first stop, Ulta. Let's gun it. Why am I acting weird? I almost brought a joint to like high ride around my errands. I was like, Tara, that's a horrible idea. I'm here. I have to get Laura Mercier translucent setting powder and like a setting spray because I do wear makeup now. I found a way to wear makeup without it making me look worse, which is fascinating to me. I'm so excited about this. Okay, I can't find Laura Mercier, so I'm getting the Anastasia translucent setting powder and the dewy set setting spray. I am a beauty influencer now. This is crazy shit, guys. Okay, I'm at the shack on the side of the road where I get my nicotine. It's a gorgeous shack. It's called La Brea Newspapers. La Brea Newsstand is where I get my puff bars. Can I get the strawberry mango and the strawberry ice cream flim floats? All right, guess where I am. Hint, I'm here every other day. I must really love it here because I'm literally here every other day. 
My bird ran out of toys, so he's been screaming like even more than normal, which can't happen. So these are his favorite things in the world. It's like spongy wood. I bought a hundred of them on Amazon like a month and a half ago. They're all gone. It was like $450 I spent on wood. And he loves these like Chinese takeout boxes. Loves the shit. I'm gonna try to clip his nails on my own. I'm also getting just a bunch of these cans of kitten food for my kittens and the made by nacho wet food for Roger. And then I got Phoebe's like kidney bullshit. She's got kidney disease. I'm at the tanning salon, I just peed. I tan at Palm Beach Tan. This is the tanning lotion I use. Cypher Titanium. I'm naked. All right, I'm done with like the, the bearable errands. I'm not doing the rest. I got sweet green. If you must know my sweet green order because it is the best tasting thing in the entire world. This is my favorite food. I get romaine, quinoa, roasted sweet potatoes, tofu, chickpeas, cucumber, red onion, and crispy rice with lemon squeeze and pesto vinaigrette. It is gas. So I'm gonna sit in the car and eat my salad. And Okay, thanks for watching. So yeah, very busy day. Um, most productive person I've ever heard of. She went to Ulta for some makeup. She got nicotine at the side of the road. She went to the pet store and she got a tan. Oh, and she got lunch. Don't forget lunch. And she decided she wasn't doing the other stuff that was less bearable because she can do it anytime she wants because she doesn't have to go to a regular job like most people do. So yeah, absolutely the most productive person I've ever heard of in my life. Here's another video of her working just like way too hard. I wish she would take a break because it's honestly, it's a lot. Like, I don't know how she can do it all. It is 7 a.m. and I am on sunset in a puffer jacket. Fit kind of goes dummy though, not gonna lie. Dummy just came out of my mouth, ignore that. I wanna find some sort of coffee shop. I'm hoping this fixes my sleeping schedule because I don't know what happened. For the past week, I've been waking up at like fucking noon and I haven't done that since I was like a drunk. I found a coffee shop that says eat, heal, love. Let's, oh, that's embarrassing. Didn't know there was somebody behind me there. Could I get a hot latte made with oat milk, please? How cute is this patio? OD. I made a reservation for the like Gucci ha 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 Harry collab pop up. My reservation or like my appointment is today at three. I don't think I can go because if I go, if I go, I'm going to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on things that I hardly like just because Harry's name is on it. Some of the pieces are mad cool, don't get me wrong, but like $3,000 for like a sweater vest. So I'm going to respectfully try my best to stay far, far away. All right, off to Target to buy a tent because I will be sleeping on the sidewalk this weekend. No, I'm not joking. Lucky me. I'm sleeping outside. Another very busy, extremely hardworking, difficult, grueling day for Tara. She got coffee. She tried to fix her sleeping schedule because she's been waking up at noon. So I guess she missed the 11 a.m. be real or she was probably in bed for her be real in the morning, which I don't know how she could do that when that's the problem with everyone else. And then she made a reservation that she didn't go to for the Gucci Harry Styles collaboration that she was gonna shop. And then she went to Target to get a tent to sleep outside again for her Harry Styles so that she can be the front of the pit because she's gonna be in the pit that day. <laughs> Once again, the reason why what she said was so tone deaf is because her life is obviously very privileged and very easy. Most people do not get to go to Target as their job and just make a video on TikTok about it or just film themselves going to get coffee and get paid. Obviously, I'm sure most of you don't get to do that either. Just like I don't, like we all have jobs, right? The issue isn't that she's an influencer. I don't care. I wanna post online for my job too. Like I do YouTube, it's very similar. I do Instagram, I do TikTok, all of that. That's not the issue, but the issue is her thinking that she's somehow better or more hardworking. And she's saying this to her audience of again, probably 90 to 99% normal people who work regular jobs, who have to go there five days a week for eight hours and be confined to their job. They don't get to come and go as they want. They don't get unlimited vacation time. Tara can take a vacation anytime she wants. There's no obligation unless she has like a sponsorship she needs to post. But even that, that's something she agreed to because she wanted to, not because she had to. This is why I don't think she's ever worked a real job because she thinks she's the most productive, hardworking person, but literally anyone in the world would be the most productive person if their job was going to get a tan that they wanted to do or going to buy something at Target that they wanted or going out to get coffee that they wanted. Like, yes, she gets paid for it, so that's fine. Like, it still is her job. But for her to not realize how stupidly tone deaf it comes across to complain about how other people are in bed, 
let them be in bed, who cares? And then she did of course make an apology slash statement about it. So I'm gonna play that here now. This one was a little bit more of an apology from what I remember, but I'll play that up here. I'm sitting here really sad and I bet you guys know why. Um, the reason I've been gaslighting you and like not saying sorry is because I never want to like apologize to people that just go on the internet to fucking hate on people and troll people. Like I never want to like give them what they want, which is like, uh, blah, blah, blah. like I never wanted to do that. But because it's like you guys and like people that used to like love me and like trust me and now you guys fucking hate me and think that I'm a horrible person. Like that makes me so fucking sad. I go through periods of time where all I want to do is fucking lay in bed. Like there's nothing wrong with that. Like at all. What I said came out the wrong way, whether you work overnight shifts and you're fucking tired in the middle of the day and you need to take a nap like who cares like no one should be commenting on other people like taking a break or like if you're like sad and all and you can't get out of bed like that's fine that's completely okay like take that time for yourself like i should ha i have no place to be coming in and being like get out of bed like and i wasn't like ta i wasn't talking about like the general public i was talking about the influencers that i follow on be real that literally like lay in bed because they want to like rest up for the drinking night like i was just making a joke about them but like and i know i should have just like sent it to them but like i don't like i don't know i don't even like use snapchat or anything i just like kind of post things on tiktok that are meant for like certain people like i wasn't thinking and it was dumb and i'm so sorry i love you guys more than life and it makes me really sad that that you guys like i don't know you think i'm like i didn't mean i don't know i don't know how to talk and i hope you guys know this already but the Nobody wants to work these days. Like, that's just a Kim Kardashian meme. Me and Jordy literally say it, like, all day long. And I took it to the internet, and y'all didn't take it well, so... But I'm sorry. And I, I'm sorry I don't know how to, like, talk, like, in ways like this. Like, I don't know. I just want to be homies again, um, like, really bad. So, is, can we truce? I'm so sorry. And I will think before I... I didn't even, like, think about that when i was posting it like a dumbass like i'm sorry but like can we please be homies again i want to be homies y'all are my only friends and you know that like y'all are my only real friends and i can't lose you um so i'm sorry for being an idiot can we make up bae i would love to make up i love you more than life i love you more than cheese and i love cheese a lot i love you more than cheese that's what me and my mom say to each other we say i love you more than cheese i love you more than cheese now y'all are gonna call me weird. <laughs> I'm kidding. So that was the video that Tara initially made kind of addressing the whole thing. She said that how she didn't want to apologize at first because she felt like everyone was just hating on her for the sake of hating her. So therefore she didn't want to apologize to her actual fan base because she didn't want to be giving the haters what they want, which just seems really stupid and makes it seem really ungenuine. Like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't want to apologize to you people who actually care about me and like me because I was afraid that these couple people who hate me just for the sake of it would get what they want. That seems ridiculous. But anyways, tries to justify what she was saying by basically explaining it off as how she was talking about her influencer friends who are resting up before their night of drinking. As if that somehow matters. Like in my opinion, it's still her passing judgment on them and their lifestyle and whatever they wanna do. And I also find it hard to believe that she knows that everyone she follows is like resting up for drinking. Like, I don't know, it just sounds like a projection because once again, she has to think that she's so much better than everyone and she looks so lowly on what everyone else is doing. Talking about her influencer friends and how she wasn't referring to the general public, but like she literally posted it to the general public for her 4 million followers to see. So how are they supposed to take that? Like you're posting for 4 million followers and you don't think any of them are gonna think that you're talking to or about them. Like, it doesn't make sense. Or she could just specify, like if it really was wasn't about the general public and if she really didn't think she was so much better than everyone why would she not just make that tiktok but in the beginning say oh my gosh all my influencer friends on be real are just resting up for their night of drinking like, but she said no one works i'm better i'm so productive does anyone work to all of her followers who again like i mentioned previously most of them are not influencers. Most of her followers are just regular people. And then I also find it funny because she herself has said that that's all she's been doing. Like she was waking up at noon on all the days of the Harry Styles concert. She was out drinking every night, sleeping in a tent for Harry Styles, like all this, so. Harry's residency in Los Angeles has really done wonders for my productivity. I literally, on days where there's a show, I don't do shit. I wake up at noon and then I'm like, oh, I don't have time to do anything because I have to leave for the show in six hours. So I'm just gonna sit around and stare at the wall. And then I go to the show, I come back and I watch videos on TikTok from that show all night long, okay? The cycle repeats, I wake up at noon the next day. Say there's no show the next day. On days where there's no show, I sit in this chair. 
I stare at the wall and I think about Harry. I think about the next show and I talk to my, that, that's all I've been doing. I haven't done anything in like two weeks. I also have no desire to film and talk about anything besides Harry. Like you guys are like, talk about something else. All you're talking about is Harry for the past week. I have no other thoughts. There's no other thoughts in my brain besides Harry. So how am I gonna film a video being like, oh, this is me going on a dog walk and I'm making this, this salad. No, I don't, I'm not thinking about that. I don't really see how what she's doing is any different. Like, why does she not, th like, why is it okay for her to do it and she's still productive? But when our influencer friends are just laying down or drinking or doing whatever, they're wrong for that and they're just lazy and they don't work. And then at the end, also her saying like, I just posted as a joke, but you guys didn't take it well. It just seems like she she's more upset at how people took it rather than like actually apologizing and owning up to what she said that was wrong or why people might not have taken it that well. It just seems like she's putting the onus on her followers and saying, oh, well, I was joking, but you guys didn't take it right. But I don't know how she thinks the general like working class population would take being told that no one works and everyone's lazy. Like most people, especially over the last few years, like the world has shifted a lot. Inflation's at like a crazy high. Goods and like services and rent and everything is ridiculously expensive these days. And most people are working their asses off just to afford the bare minimum. So I don't know how well she thought that people would take that or like how she thought people would take that differently. But yeah, for the weirdest part about the controversies, again, that I mentioned before is I find her apologies always kind of make things worse. The last one we just watched wasn't as bad, but in the apology for the Finna stuff, she brought up sexually arousing her pet bird, which was news to me. Like when I saw that, I was literally like, what is happening? And that sent me down a whole of the rabbit hole looking into it that I wouldn't have even known about had she not randomly brought it up in the apology for the Finna situation, which was already like super viral. So I feel like she kind of introduced her audience into this whole other issue. And now we're gonna get back, we're gonna circle back to the bird and what happened with that. So this is the video explaining where she's allegedly joking, but I don't know, it seems kind of weird about how she didn't know that she was arousing her pet bird and how she still apparently does it now. And I apologize for the overlay. This is like someone reposting her video, but anyways, so it, there's it's like a TikTok within a TikTok. I couldn't find just the regular video, but I would assume she probably deleted it, but you can still hear everything she's saying and it kind of shows what we need to know. So I'll just play that here now. I'm gonna let you guys in on the dirty little creepy secrets of the bird, the parrot. I don't know if anyone knows this, but like, if you touch a bird on its back or under its wings, it like sexually arouses the bird. And for the first like, you know, the first like four months I had Marty, like I didn't know that. I got comments like, don't touch him on his back, you're turning him on. I was like, fuck off. So I'd touch his back, I'd rub under your wing. Oh, a good yeah. spot. Yeah. I'm such a sick bastard. And like I still do it sometimes. I'm a terrible person, but like it's like funny. It's funny because like now I know, you know? It's funny. So now I know when I, I know. touch right there. Ding dong. Yeah, yeah, swing, yum, yum. Sometimes I get Marty's hopes up. I'm like, you know what? One day we're gonna have eggs. You might have a family just from touching under those wings. He's like, boy, we're having kids. He wants more. You want more because you're a sick prick. Oh. That was the video. Here she is addressing the bird again. I mean, I'm so sorry to disappoint anybody that is looking for a different response, but I'm not into my bird life. When I first got Marty, I like didn't do any research before I got a bird, which is the worst possible thing you could ever do about any animal. At least I did it after the fact. And I, you know, now I know everything about birds. But when I first got Marty, I would like post videos with him, obviously. And I would be like petting him like on his back, under his wings, blah, blah, blah. And I got like a few comments here and there like, Tara, you're sexually arousing your bird. I was like, what? I like didn't get it for a while and then eventually I researched it and it's true if you touch a bird on their back or under their wings they can get sexually aroused. I thought that this was the funniest thing. It's not funny but I thought it was like the funniest and crazy. I was just like astonished. I was like what? Me and my mom would joke about it on FaceTime. We were like that's the craziest thing ever and I was so fixated on it for a while. I made so many videos. I was Marty not the earring today. And I made this stupid video where I was like guys I figured out why Marty has been screaming for so long. It's probably because he was sexually frustrated because I would be like touching his back and stuff. And I made a stupid joke in the video. I was like, and sometimes I don't do it. And I like touched under his wing. I was joking. I make a lot of jokes about me and Marty having eggs and getting married because he's in, he's so beyond in love with me. 
But unfortunately, um, yeah, this is a platonic relationship, me and Marty. I get it, some of my jokes don't slide with you guys. I don't understand how they would. Some things are better kept in the family group chat. Cause me, and, me and my family just make crazy jokes and the, the shit about Marty was like, our group chat was on fire. Like that was the funniest two weeks of my life. So like I just made that dumb video and didn't slide with y'all, that's okay. I also think Marty's finally accepted that me and him are just pals. I'm your mother. Yeah, I think he finally he finally realized that, which is great. Yeah, those are the two videos that I found of Tara addressing the bird situation. The first one was especially hard to watch just because it was like really cringy and just like gross and weird that she was still doing that despite knowing what it does. Um, but she says it was just a dumb video and in said dumb video, she was still rubbing like under his wings and feeling under his wings in the video. I don't know, I feel like no matter what, once you know that, if you're continuing, whether you're joking or not, it's freaking weird. Like that is creepy and weird. And she even admitted in the second video where she was trying to explain that it was just a joke that in the first first video, she did still touch under his wing. So she quite literally said that she still did it and just somehow we're supposed to glaze over that. And it wasn't just her talking about the fact that she didn't know and blah, blah, blah. She was still actively doing it. And then I also just think about it like, you know, obviously it's a bird, it's just as valid, but like imagine if it was a dog or something and she was touching and doing that. Like people would have a very, very intense reaction to that. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's under like animal abuse laws not allowed. So just the fact that it's a bird for some reason what she thinks it's okay or because it doesn't visually look like a sexual spot, she thinks it's fine. To so, you know you know, it's just like you can't just undo that and the best thing you can do is just stop doing it. But if you keep going when you know what it's doing, it's it's just creepy and disgusting. And once again, she blames her audience and says, you know, I made a joke and I should have known that wouldn't sit well with you. Like, why would that sit well with you? As if it's their fault that she's being called out for being a, a creep. Hopefully you guys get why that's weird and I don't have to keep going on about that one. But that's just another thing that she was called out on. And there are a few other like smaller, not smaller in importance, but smaller as in like less evidence, less videos about it that she's been called out on, like getting DUIs and defending blackface. So she's posted a few different tweets about how drunk driving is the stupidest thing you can do and how you're like an asshole if you do it. But then listen to this video here and explain to me how this is even the same person. So a lot of people ask me why I don't drive. So I compiled a little list, a list of why I can't drive. <clears throat> I got a DUI when I was 18. I ran over a gas pump, knocked it over, ran it over, then left, got a hit and run. I've hit a deer, I've hit a bird. I played bumper cars off of a fucking curb once and ruined my car. I've hit a plaza sign. I have T-boned somebody and their car door came off. I rear-ended someone in DC. I rear-ended somebody else in Providence and it broke my stepdad's wrist who was in the passenger seat. I hit a brand new BMW in a parking lot. I have hit a big rock that really totaled my car. I floored it through a fucking lake and soaked my engine, so that ruined my engine. I have hit a couch on the highway going about 75 miles per hour. And I've also hit somebody's Jeep in a rental car. I had to get a rental car for a rental car. Let's play guess my insurance in the comments. Let's play guess Tara's car insurance. Guess how much it is. You don't wanna fuck. Guess my insurance. Um, I'm gonna hope zero because you shouldn't need insurance because you shouldn't even be allowed to drive at that point. That is so ridiculous. It's not funny or quirky. I don't get why she's like laughing and thinks she's so like silly and funny for that. And I don't get how she's even still allowed to drive because at least here, like usually if you have that many issues, you are told you can't be insured anymore and you cannot legally drive without insurance here. So I mean, yeah, you could technically drive without it and hope not to get caught. But I don't even get how she's allowed to drive, especially with a DUI on top of all of those issues. And it's also not funny at all. Like she's laughing and thinking she's so quirky, but it's not funny at all to get behind the wheel drunk and endanger people's lives. Like that's something I have zero tolerance for. And for some reason she didn't used to think it was funny according to the tweets, but now it's funny to her for whatever reason. And it just comes off so immature. Like, tell me if you guys relate to this, but this kind of reminds me of like in high school when people would start driving and they would think it was like, or not even just driving, but with anything. And they would think it's so funny to be reckless or to be bad at something. And people would purposefully be bad at things to be quirky and unique or, or to have people laugh because they wanted to be funny and crazy. And that's just literally what this reminds me of, except for that Tara is supposed to be an adult who's at least a little bit more mature. Last thing that I have that she has been called out for both in the past and kind of recently. Every time a new issue comes up with her, I find the past stuff also gets brought up, which is understandable because it's just relevant at the time. But there was this picture. I don't know if this is Tara. I don't actually think it's Tara in the photo because on the tag, if you can see in this first screenshot, it's a little bit blurry, so I apologize. But it's at Ali's Beeb. 
I, sorry if I pronounced that wrong. So I don't think this is actually her. It doesn't really look like her to me, but it's hard to tell because obviously there's very heavy makeup on the photo and I've only ever seen Tara with like really big eyelash extensions and obviously not in this context. Some people online seem to think it is. Here's her reply to that. So someone tagged Ali's Beeb and said, I don't know what you're going for, but never do this again. This is highly offensive, no matter the motive, which I agree it is. So Tara said, but if a black person put white makeup all over them, everyone would say it's funny. The big difference with what she's saying, she's kind of trying to say, like, pass it off as, oh, well, like, if it was, if the roles reversed, it would be funny. So whatever, who cares? Kind of like in White Chick. However, the big difference is the motive and the history, especially. I'm gonna have some articles linked below that I read about like all the history, just because this is something I've definitely looked into a few different times just to really learn like the gravity and the history behind it. But blackface was used for fuel for racial discrimination, essentially. So it really doesn't hit the same to say, oh, well, if the roles reversed, it would be the same and everyone would laugh. So who cares? And I get that Tara was younger then, but... I feel like even when I was young and stupid, I would have never felt comfortable doing that, posting that, defending that. It just would never have happened. But yeah, as mentioned, I'll link some articles below specifically about why that's a problem if you do want to like continue your research on that. But that's basically a overview of everything that I've seen that Tara's been called out for. I'm sure there's like minor other things around, but that was kind of the main ones. Um, the more recent being just the super tone deaf nature of her TikToks and then some of the worst stuff as well. But yeah, so that's basically everything I have today on just an overview of what Tara has been called out for and let me know if you think she's one of the most entitled influencers you've ever seen because for me she definitely is. Anytime I see her videos come up on my page it's always her being called out for saying something else that's tone deaf or rude or just being weird and shitty. Let me know what you th thought about this video or if you want to see more videos like this one and make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. I was like no like I finna be in the pit like